Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, digitalassetlife.com, a free site. Let's talk about some relevant information in crypto. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, many of us grew up with, and I mean within the last few years, during crypto's existence, many of us grew up with CoinMarketCap.com. It's an excellent site. It's a must-go-to site. Right on CoinMarketCap.com, they list the market caps of all of the cryptos in the cryptoverse that they're tracking, which is the majority of them. And of course, importantly, if you click on the link to an individual crypto, they will advise you of the market history of that crypto, the market price over time, as well as where you could buy the crypto and the crypto's website that often has a lot of information about who's backing the crypto what the crypto's long-term vision is, how the crypto has performed in the past, and on some of these sites, they'll even have the cryptocurrency's white paper, right? Which is the blueprint that lays out uh, the goals of the cryptocurrency. Well, understand, we're now in a new era. And while I check coinmarketcap.com every day, it's a great site. There's information I need that isn't on that site, right? And one of the rules of investing, and that's what we're doing in the crypto space, is to get the information, to be able to think for yourself. Well, what I want people to do, if you're interested in decentralized finance, shortened DeFi, like I am, is I want people to consider looking at DeFiLlama.com. Again, it's DeFiLlama.com. Let's spell it out. D-E-F-I-L-L-A-M-A.com. Understand, this site offers key metrics that will help explain what some of the major investors in the cryptoverse are doing. So, for example, a key metric in decentralized finance is the idea of total value locked. In the trade, they call it TVL. And what that is, is that's the amount of assets that are staked in a particular protocol right the way it works is I'm a lender I want to get a return on my investment so what I will do is I will lock in a certain amount of crypto that somebody else can borrow with the understanding that they're going to pledge collateral and that if they don't pay me back my crypto as scheduled per the smart contract then I'll be able to collect on the collateral that they've pledged right that's the way DeFi works put simply it's mostly over collateralized loans And so what you'll find is that some protocols have more total value locked than others. It reflects their bigger size. So you may have heard that billionaire Mark Cuban loves Aave, right? The coin is A-A-V-E. And Aave really hasn't been in the news that much. 
But when you go to DeFiLama.com and you click on the protocols link, they'll bring you to a page that has the TVL or total value locked rankings. And what you'll find out is that Aave, which isn't mentioned as much as many other protocols, has $14.39 billion. Let me repeat that. $14.39 billion in total value locked. In other words, you have a lot of people staking assets on the platform. Right? If you're a traditional bank, you should be afraid. You should be very afraid. Now, what I like about DeFi Llama is if you go further and if you click on the Ave link, you're going to pull up a page that gives you a description of Ave, right, that breaks down the different chains that Aave can be found on. You'll find Ethereum, Polygon, uh, or two such chains. They'll also give you a link as CoinMarketCap.com does to Aave's own website. Right? And of course they'll have a chart showing you Aave's market value over time. I strongly recommend the people watching this video who like to do their own research, who like to find out about coins, who aren't just going by word of mouth, but who actually want to have the data to back up what they perceive to be the market trend, to go to DeFi Lama.com to look up the various protocols, the various chains, the various DEXs, etc. Let's switch gears for a moment and let's go to the chains link on DeFi Lama. Now I believe this is very important and let me be as clear as I can be. I am not selling any of my Ethereum. I'm simply not. Right? Not because I believe in the intrinsic value of Ethereum. Right? I privately believe, especially after doing some transactions in the last 24 hours where I greatly overpaid on the fees I was paying on the Ethereum chain, I greatly believe that Ethereum has been surpassed technologically by other chains. For example, the Solana chain. Uh, Binance's chain. I believe they've passed Ethereum technologically. And I'm not one of these guys who likes to believe in a lot of promises. Right? So, you know, I have a mindset of, hey, if you're going to tell me about something, show me that it exists. So I don't want to believe too much in Ethereum 2.0. Right? Too much can go wrong in the transition. Now, all of that said, some of the people in the investment community, and you need to be aware of what they're doing, firmly believe that Ethereum is the place to be because of all of the other chains connected to it, right? All of the protocols that are on the Ethereum blockchain. So what I like with DeFi Llama is you can actually look up the number of protocols on the various blockchains. So if you click the chains link on DeFi Llama, you're going to see that Ethereum has 213 protocols attached to it. Right? 213 protocols. But when you look at the total value locked under Ethereum, you're going to find out it's a whopper. It's $127.8 billion. Right, a hundred and twenty seven point eight billion dollars. Now that's the giant in the room. 
In second place is Binance. Binance only has, and I say only in quotes, $17.42 billion in total value locked. But understand, 87 protocols, 87 protocols are now on the Binance blockchain. Would it surprise you to know that Solana, which seems to be relatively new to the party, newer technology, already has 17 protocols on the chain. Solana already has $10.89 billion US dollars in total value locked. Right, so just understand that if you, like me, believe in these interoperability chains that allow people to shift assets from one chain to another, that allow dApps, decentralized applications to move from one chain to another, then you believe, and you need to think a few years ahead of the crowd, then you have to believe that there are going to be some chains, excuse me, there are going to be some dApps that are going to migrate away from Ethereum, given Ethereum's high gas fees, right, they're, they're going to migrate away from Ethereum toward chains like Solana, which are faster and cheaper right now. Right? Just food for thought. Let me also point out, too, that there's some chains listed on DeFi Llama. Right? Full disclosure, I'm an investor in some of them that are growing by leaps and bounds that you need to be aware of. Number five on the list is Polygon. Understand, 59 protocols are already on Polygon, right? The total value locked on Polygon is $4.82 billion, right? Number six is a recent investment of mine, Avalanche. 28 protocols are already on Avalanche, 28. Avalanche already has $2.38 billion in total value locked. Also, number seven is interesting. I'm keeping an eye on it. I have not had an opportunity to invest in it. But it's called Arbitron. Excuse me, Arbitron. The last three letters are R-U-M, right? Let's spell it out. A-R-B-I-T-R-U-M, Arbitron. Just understand that this is attracting a lot of institutional money. You have 11, 11 protocols already on the platform. And this platform, which many of you may not have heard of, already has $1.89 billion in total value locked. Also, another chain that's been on fire lately that you need to look at because of the direction in which it's going right understand games are now on the blockchain and you have a dungeons and dragons type of game right now that is on the phantom f-a-n-t-o-m blockchain that's been on fire so as people buy phantom coins to engage in this game the platform has taken off right just understand the video gaming industry has been vibrant for years it's also a gateway you start playing one game on a platform and then of course another version of that game comes out on the platform, you're not going to leave the platform. You're going to stay on the chain. Also, it has its own momentum. Developers then start seeing a lot of games on a chain and they say, I need to design 
the game I have in my head on that chain. Soon an ecosystem blows up and by the time people realize what's going on, early investors in the chain have made a mint. So I want people to take a hard look at Phantom. Let me also return to Avalanche. One of the things that concerns me, and understand I'm an OG, right? I got into crypto in part, in large part, because it was stateless money. Because I wanted to get away from central banks. I wanted to get away from centralized finance. Right? One of the things that worries me about um, the move away from Bitcoin, the move away from proof of work toward proof of stake, right? Everyone says, oh, it's more environmentally friendly, right? There's a downside to proof of stake. It's far more centralized than proof of work. Well, understand Avalanche, which I mentioned earlier, that's definitely a coin you need to look at. It's already in the top 50 of all market caps in the cryptoverse. Avalanche has taken steps to make sure that it remains somewhat decentralized. Right? You need to look and research that angle of Avalanche because it's very important. We all know that the centralized central bank sovereign nation issue digital currency world is going to try to challenge the decentralized cryptoverse. We know that's going to happen. We know that banks like the Federal Reserve are not going to just sit there and watch the total value lock explode on all these chains. Right? We know that. Just understand that Bitcoin right now is uniquely situated because Bitcoin is so decentralized that there isn't a central point of failure, right? It's very hard to commence legal proceedings against Bitcoin because Bitcoin has no address, right? Understand too, it's hard to control a medium when anyone with mining power, sufficient mining power, can step up and start being a Bitcoin miner. Right? There isn't some central group determining who's a validator and what have you. Well, I believe Avalanche, in terms of the proof of stake coins, is ahead of the curve in terms of insisting on some level of decentralization you're going to find that some of these coins are not sufficiently decentralized. They're the coins that are vulnerable to things like 51% attacks. Right? And those coins are going to be vulnerable when, so to speak, the centralized empire strikes back. So just understand, the cryptoverse is evolving. Right? New ideas keep getting improved upon. There's an evolution. On DeFi Llama right now, you're going to see many of the best ideas right now in the decentralized finance world. Just understand some of the ideas, Ethereum in my opinion, and I'm not selling any, but Ethereum, have already been surpassed by some of the newer technologies. Now don't get me wrong. Life is complicated. Ethereum has a certain network effect. Has a certain brand name. Right? People are going to trust that Ethereum is going to catch up and copy and improve upon the work of some of their competitors. Okay, I get it. People don't all migrate away from a protocol overnight. Right, but just understand that a list of Ethereum's competitors, including some with, in my opinion, some better technology, faster transaction times, 
cheaper costs. Right? Yesterday I did a transaction and I had to pay over $20 in transaction fees on Ethereum. Right? Just understand some of these newer models are far cheaper. They're faster. Right? They've been deflationary. I know people are making a lot of news about Ethereum burning coins. Folks, other protocols burn coins too. Right? You can find out this information on your own by doing your research on sites like CoinMarketCap.com, which to me is a must, and DeFi Llama, which is a must. I hope you give both a look. I hope you focus on the total value locked as well as the market cap divided by total value locked ratio. Right? Look at the charts, which will show the historical growth of the protocols and of the chains. Go to their websites. See what they're trying to do and then ask yourself, are they accomplishing it? Figure out their future plans. Figure out if there is a path to the future. Right? See the interest rates that people who are staking coins are getting. Right? Figure out why Ave is as popular as it is and why it's not mentioned more in the mainstream media, right? For those who want to know about some of the top coins, some of the top protocols, just understand the top three, Aave, the symbol is A-A-V-E, Curve, the symbol is C-R-V, and Instadap, the symbol is I-N-S-T, right? All of them with more total value locked than compound. Another one, COMP, aren't mentioned that much in the news. Understand all of them, an argument can be made, are offering significant value. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me point out to the DeFi Llama, and it's a bit uh, mathematical. It's for the mathematically inclined. DeFi Llama, like me, has a newsletter on Substack.com, right? Um, you definitely want to give that newsletter a look. It's DeFiLlama.Substack.com, right? And on their site, they talk about Curve Finance, they talk about Polygon, they talk about Lido Finance, if you're someone who wants to sit down and actually research crypto, in my opinion, that free subscription to that newsletter is well worth it. That's how I see it. I hope this helps. Let me hear from you. If there's information that you want to share with the cryptocurrency curious, then I hope you do so in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.